For 150 years, the floor of the New York Stock Exchange was the center of the financial world, the economic engine that helped American business raise capital and create jobs. Today, it's still the public facade of Wall Street and a television backdrop for reporters relaying financial news. But less than 30% of the trading is conducted here now, and the specialists and the noise of the floor is being replaced by the speed and quiet efficiency of computers, and the action is moved elsewhere. There are now more than 80 alternative trading systems around the country, plus two brand new electronic stock exchanges, which most of you have probably never heard of. BATS and Direct Edge. They're owned by the big banks and by high-frequency trading firms, and neither of them would give us an interview or let us inside to film their operations. But they trade more than a billion shares a day at blinding speed, and most of those bets are being made by machines. The players range from firms like Goldman Sachs, Barclays, Credit Suisse, and Morgan Stanley to hedge funds and smaller operations like Tradeworks, which is the only high-frequency trading firm that would talk to us or let us in. It's run by Manoj Narang and a small group of mathematicians and scientists called quants, which is short for quantitative analysts, and their high-speed computers trade 40 million shares every day. Are humans ever involved in the trading? Humans are not involved in the trading uh, because humans are way too slow uh, to trade on the kinds of opportunities that we're trying to capture. We're trying to capture opportunities that exist for only fractions of a second. The stock over here was down 1.8% for the past week. The TradeWorks uh, computers don't care where a stock is going to be trading next year, next month, next week, or even tomorrow, because they're going to be in and out of it today in a matter of minutes. What's the point of buying and selling a stock that you hold for three minutes? the same objective that uh, all other participants have in the market is to, to make money. You buy low, sell high, that's how you make money. And the computer will know when to buy and when to sell? Sure, the computer is monitoring real-time data and uh, it knows what to do uh, with that data and how to make decisions based on that. What Narang and other high-frequency traders tell their computers to do is to make a profit of a penny or less 40 million times a day. They scan the different exchanges, trying to anticipate which direction individual stocks are likely to move in the next fraction of a second, based on current market conditions and statistical analysis of past performance. But the computers have no real understanding of who these companies are and what they do. So it doesn't really know whether a company is well managed or whether... Not at all. And it doesn't care. It doesn't know who the CEO is or what that CEO's background is, doesn't know the whether management team, whether doesn't he's know. Whether he's going through a divorce. Exactly. Whether he's just been sued for sexual harassment. Right. It knows information that you can quantify about the company. It's all math. It's all probability and statistics, saying a procedure that you can uh, define mm -hmm. precisely. The trading instructions are programmed into the computers with complicated mathematical formulas called algorithms. Narang showed us how it works with a simple, hypothetical example he uses for demonstration purposes. I'm going to test a strategy where if a stock went down 5% for the past week, I'm going to buy $5 of that stock. And if a different stock went up 10% last week, I'm going to sell $10 of that stock. And I'm going to do that for every stock that's in my tradable universe simultaneously. Which is how many? Which is over 4,000 stocks. Well, about 4,500 stocks. The strategy, which could only be successfully executed with a high-speed computer, would result in almost as many losing trades as winners, but over the past eight years would have produced a tidy profit, something that Narang and other high-frequency traders have gotten used to. And how successful have you been? We've had two or three days in a row where we lose money, but we've never had a week so far where, where we lost. We've never had a month that, that, that uh, was a loser for us. Just five years ago, high-frequency traders accounted for 30% of the stock trades in the U.S. Recent estimates have ranged as high as 70%, and institutional traders like Joe Saluzzi of Themis Trading LLC have come to believe that the game is rigged. How can you make money day after day? There was even one firm that said they made money four years in a row, every single day. Well, you have to be getting information that other people don't have. Otherwise, statistically, that's an impossibility. Actually, high-frequency traders are getting the same market information that Joe Saluzzi gets. They're just getting it a little bit sooner. It's only a few fractions of a second sooner, but if you're running supercomputers, Saluzzi says, it can be an eternity. What you're saying is the people with the fastest computers 
have an advantage. They get the best deals. Every time. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. I mean, if they're spending that kind of money and they're using that type of infrastructure, they're doing it for a reason, and it is to get a speed advantage in that respect. It's not just the speed of the supercomputers that's important. It's also their physical location. The closer they are to the stock exchange's server, the quicker they'll be able to get critical market information. Well, this has been in the works for at least four years. This mm -hmm. Larry Leibowitz, the chief operating officer of the New York Stock Exchange, believes its massive new data center in Mawa, New Jersey, will help the exchange regain some of the market share it's lost to electronic trading platforms. And he's busy persuading traders to lease space in these stark black boxes for their supercomputers. This is one of the pods? This is one of the pods. This is the nerve center. It's called co-location, a service that high-frequency traders will pay tens of thousands of dollars a month for, and includes access to raw data from the exchange that is almost instantaneous. You know, we're getting down to, you know, how fast can the electrons travel at this point. They can predict the price of a stock before you can because of the speed that they're using. So they actually see the trades before you do? They can see order flow coming into the exchanges before a regular person off of, say, a Bloomberg or somebody who doesn't have the co-location, the data feeds, and all the other sophisticated technology that they employ, which is not cheap, by the way. It's extremely expensive to set these things up. How much faster do they see it? It could be a few milliseconds. How much of an advantage is a couple of milliseconds? Millions, if not billions of dollars a year. That edge, Joe Saluzzi claims, has made high-frequency traders the new insiders on Wall Street. And he says he spots signs of predatory behavior every day. Saluzzi, who trades large blocks of stock for institutional investors, says the supercomputers are programmed to place and then cancel thousands of orders a second, trying to sniff out which way a market is moving in order to jump in ahead of big rallies and sell off before big declines. He calls them parasites who exploit a technological advantage to suck money out of the market and add no value. Does it raise capital for companies? Absolutely not. It, if anything, it's, dis it's distracting from the capital raising process. Do these high frequency trades have anything to do with market fundamentals? Valuation is irrelevant. It's all about just moving the price up and down the ladder all day long. They don't, each day is new. Each day starts fresh. So you have to question the true valuation of the markets now. Larry Leibowitz of the New York Stock Exchange says there is absolutely no evidence that small investors are being hurt by high-frequency trading. Most of them, he says, don't care about pennies when they're buying and selling stocks, and they're in it for the longer haul. Look, there's always been charges for as long as trading has existed that people are front-running orders, manipulating stocks. This is nothing new. I think now you add to it the element of the mysterious element of the computer, and it makes people even more mistrustful. Leibowitz and other proponents of high-frequency, high-speed computer trading say it's performed a valuable function, tripling volume, reducing stock spreads and transaction costs, and providing liquidity to the markets. Liquidity means that if you want to buy or sell a stock, uh, you could do it right away, and you could do it at a fair price. That's what liquidity means. And without short-term traders, there is no liquidity. Traders like Manoj Narang say their presence in the market is making it cheaper and easier for everyone to buy and sell stocks. But regulators and lawmakers like former Senator Ted Kaufman of Delaware have other concerns. Clearly liquidity is way up. But what I say is liquidity is always trumped by transparency and fairness. You can't have fairness if you don't have transparency. And we Senator Kaufman, who has both business and engineering degrees, says he's a big fan of technology, but he thinks it's gotten way ahead of financial regulators' ability to monitor it. Right now, it's not even possible to determine for sure who is making high-frequency trades or what they're telling their computers to do. We do not know what's going on inside those boxes. There's all types of allegations about what's going on inside there. And basically what can happen is you can have these, these meltdowns where you can have a, a, a computer just go crazy and, uh, and cause all kinds of problems. Come on. Which takes us back to the mini crash last year in one of the scariest rides in stock market history when Dow Industrials at one point plunged 600 points for no apparent reason. Turns out it was triggered when a mutual funds computer dumped $4.1 billion of securities on the market in a 20-minute period, which were then gobbled up by the computers of high-frequency traders and then sold almost immediately, sending other computers and traders heading for the exits. 
The events of May 6th scared people. There, I don't think there's any question about that. SEC Chairman Mary Shapiro had already proposed rule changes before the crash that would allow regulators to track and identify high-frequency trades, and she is now considering further measures. Are you comfortable with computers making, you know, 50 to 70 percent of the trades on, on Wall Street? One of the concerns is if one goes wrong, if it operates in an unexpected way given market conditions, what's the impact of that algorithm um, that has, has behaved in an unexpected way on lots of other investors in the marketplace? And Chairman Shapiro says it's happened since the mini crash, even though circuit breakers were put into place that automatically halt trading in a stock that moved more than 10 percent in a five-minute period. A number of times that those circuit breakers have been triggered um, has been because an algorithm operated in a way nobody intended for it to do, causing a stock price to go wildly out of range. The crash has contributed to a crisis in confidence on Wall Street. Afterwards, people pulled more than $70 billion out of mutual funds, and the biggest concern of Chairman Shapiro and Senator Kaufman is that average investors are losing faith in the integrity of the system. And there are a lot of people out there who think that the stock market is rigged. Rigged in the sense that there are people out there who have advantages, the insiders, right. the big companies. Yep. And I think that we have to do a better job of first obviously making sure it's not the case, but we can't be evasive about it. We have to make changes that make sense, that give people more confidence in the market, add more transparency, and make people feel like this is a place I can trust my retirement savings to. Since we first aired this story, the Securities and Exchange Commission has proposed further reforms, and high-frequency traders are now moving into currency and commodity markets.